Welcome to June 2019 Columbus Web Analytics Wednesdays. I'm May Alouache and I will be talking about mobile app analytics. It's a pleasure to be presenting to you in this June session a little background about me and what I do. I started working on websites and e-commerce in 2000 and I've focused on digital analytics for the past 10 years of my career. I currently work in Blast Analytics and Marketing as an analytics consultant and I specialize in cross-platform analytics implementation and I work with great clients such as Hertz Rent-A-Car, Weight Watchers and other large retailers. I'm also a volunteer of the Digital Analytics Association and I currently work with the DAA team in the Women Analytics community and then um, also leading a project for the Women in Tech Maturity Model. At BLAST Analytics and Marketing, we support leaders to evolve their organizations by focusing on the, uh, these three strategic solutions, improve customer experience, optimize marketing performance, and increase competitive advantage. Um, we provide quality solutions by collaborating with these industry-leading partners, and our solutions turn data into insights and action with these services. Moving on to the agenda of today's session. We will start with an overview of mobile app analytics and learn the different types of app analytics and uh, the available platforms. And then we'll have enough information to move into formulating your app analytics strategy, which is of great importance to your app success. And then we will wrap up with some tips and best practices. I'd like to begin here with a quick story about a recent client of ours at Blast, which is Hertz Europe, where most people there have compact cars or no cars in the city. Hertz has this product of vans parked at Costco and Ikea where you'd be able to book these vans by the hour through an iOS or Android app to take your big purchases home. You can even unlock the car using the app and I wish they had the service for Ikea here, right? So um, they wanted to have some dashboards about the app usage and sales by location to help them with planning where to put more cars. And I remember telling them, knowing how, knowing how many transactions have already happened in each station will not tell you when the user actually searched for a car and there weren't any van available at that Costco location. While it's good to know your best performing stations, but it's not actionable data. And then we discussed that with their fleet scheduling team and they were excited to see some data about demand. They needed real-time insights about demand in each station in order to distribute their fleet where needed and increase sales. Seeing where customers searched and there were no cars available at the shopping time and day. Um, or if people searched in location where Hertz did not have a station, so that will signal business opportunity for future stations. Um, you know, knowing what you know what time of the week or what day of the week people would do their booking just so it could arrange for their you know, fleet scheduling. And also if users had a problem or got frustrated while doing their booking because they had to scan their driver license to the app and where do they drop off you know, in that booking funnel. Long story short, after they had their full-fledged app analytics in place and their team was able to look at the dashboards and reports, um, a month later, their mobility director sent me an email saying, that tool is very useful as I'm able to predict the level of utilization of each st single station. That is the value of app analytics, to inform your business decisions, to get you closer to your objectives, and enables you to predict results. They knew that, you know, the people in Paris are last minute bookers versus the Fox in London, you know, booked before they came to IKEA. And they were able to assign their fleet to the right station based on analytics. So let's do the session. Starting with the overview. What is mobile app analytics? I love this definition by Amplitude, which is a mobile analytics platform. The definition is um, the practice of collecting user behavior data, determining intent from those metrics, and taking action to drive retention, engagement, and conversion. While the field of mobile analytics includes web, since you have websites that access mobile devices, but when we say app analytics, we really focus on native apps. Native apps are those that you download from the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store for Android. 
the mobile experience, um, you know, is either through the native apps or hybrid apps, which is still an app that you download from the App Store, but it presents web content. So you're basically showing web pages in your app, and the functionality and experience is limited by that. So when we say App Analytics, we really focus on the native apps because they offer the full mobile experience and functionality, and that's what we'll go through in this session. Why should we track apps? A good analogy would be if you had a motorcycle, a car, and a van. All of these are vehicles that get you from point A to point B, but you use them differently. Um, your behavior is different on each. So similar to your phone, tablet, and laptop, you know they all get you on the internet, but you use them for different reasons and you know you behave differently on each device. So you want to think of it as the full story of your customer behavior is in both web and app. The app is another storefront for your business and you need to measure its success to optimize you know, the performance. You may browse a product catalog on your laptop easily by sorting, scrolling, looking at you know, 20, 30 products at a time. But in the app, you only have you know, a small screen, so you're looking one product at a time and sometimes you'll be searching more on the app, more than you search on the web. So the metrics for a product search means different things on your app and web. In other words, you cannot assume that your web marketing strategies automatically apply for your app. Secondly, app analytics is really important because they allow you to continuously improve your app. There's 1,000 apps uploaded to the App Store every day. Um, how do you stand out from the crowd? You need insights. Um, having analytics helps you identify critical user experience and interface problems. You know, also essential part of your software development life cycles. You need insights to know what functions to add to your app and what features to remove in the next version. Also, it will quantify your strategy and make your decision based on analytics. Unlike websites where the use of analytics is deep-rooted and unquestioned, everyone has analytics in their website. Mobile app projects, however, typically use little, if any, in-depth analytics, which leads you to limited visibility into the app usage and customer experience. Marketing teams obsess over downloads and user ratings, but these figures don't tell you the whole story. App analytics data can be divided into three categories. Combined, they are key to understand how well your mobile application works and what you can do to improve it. Um, if we talk about them in chronolog chronological order, the first one we track is marketing analytics. This covers things like whether users found your app while browsing Apple App Store or on a website, the number of downloads, um, the marketing sources. It can go deeper to compare downloads and app, and app purchases. The key here is understanding how to monetize and promote the application. And historically, developers focused on downloads because People paid to buy the app, but this is a dying breed and the current app market is free apps that offer in-app purchases. And this is why we shifted the focus from here to in-app analytics, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, you know, the next one is performance analytics. So once customers find the app, download it, you will want to measure the app health, which is less concerned with the users and more so with the machine itself identifying pages that makes the app crash or devices that you know or certain screens in which the app is slow or when the payment transactions are not going through this is really crucial to know because if the app doesn't work um, people will uninstall it or just be frustrated with it and stop using it the last and most important category is the in-app analytics these are everything a user does within the application. How do they behave within your app? Do they always go back to the home screen? What paths do they take to convert? How many times do they open your app a day or a week? And it can also include, you know, specific um, event tracking or custom tracking. You know, if you want to check certain features are being used, e-commerce funnels, other demographics. Um, so user behavior is the biggest one to consider here and how users behave within the app and how that leads or doesn't lead to an income or conversion. So there are almost infinite things to track here. You need to prioritize and customize based on app functions. 
Up next is platforms. One thing I know about being in digital analytics is that new tools come out every day and providers love to change things around once you're done with implementation. So always stay on the lookout for product updates, follow the communities and blogs to hear about latest trends, latest tools, what other analysts think of the best tools. I'm listing here some of the popular analytics tools for the app. Of course, you see there's you know Google Firebase, Apple, Adobe, Facebook, and more of the um, kind of focused tools down there. So for in-app analytics, there's Mixpanel, Localytics. Um, for performance, there's Crashalytics, Cumulus, and uh, for marketing, there's Tune, AppC, AppSLR. Um, you know, this is just a sample of the tools. Some are free. Some are open source, some are licensed, and some what we call freemium, which is you get a certain level of the product for free, and then additional options or above traffic limits um, becomes paid. Sometimes, you know, you see that you, you would need more than just one tool to, you know, for your tracking goals. And one thing that I want to note here is you don't see Google Analytics as it recently announced that it's moving all of its app tracking into Firebase, which is Google's platform for app development, but it also includes free analytics. So the sunsetting of Google Analytics is happening in October 2019, uh, with the exception of Analytics 360 properties, and that will be announced at a later date, probably. So which tool is best for you? It depends. Um, Pick tools that are, you know, according to your app intended usage and target users. There are some tools that are, you know, very strong in e-commerce or, you know, certain social media tracking. Also, it's possible that over time, you know, you would need a combination of tools. So ensure your mobile app architecture is designed to let you use multiple analytics tools. The roadmap of your app, um, or if you have an ecosystem, uh, you, you know, where your data exists, and you need to make sure that app data can flow there seamlessly, that will all affect your choice. Um, next, also, you want to pick analytics that can, you know, grow with you as you add features, users, and platforms. If you want to do A-B testing, you want a tool that supports that. Also, the SDK, or the Software Development Kit, is also an important factor. Some SDKs are heavy, some maybe your developers prefer working with, so that's all part of the equation along with the pricing plan and, and data exports. One more thing to keep in mind when you evaluate these platforms, you want to make sure you think product analytics. The background work of product analytics tools does two things, tracking the data and analyzing it, so in the end it can reveal behaviors and personas to you. So with behaviors, you want to understand how users engage within the app, track users to see what they like, what they dislike, what leads them to engage, return, and convert. Um, funnels, it lets you see the digital footprint of your users so you can uncover their pain points and realize opportunities that you have um, to reduce churn. Personas, you can even get richer insights about specific types of users and how they behave within your app. And lastly, lifetime value. It is important to quantify the lifetime value of the user as it is a critical part of understanding the user engagement over time between the first install and when the user no longer uses your app. It is a great predictor of future retention rate and projected ROI. Product analytics is what makes the data useful so you can answer business questions about user journeys and also uncover opportunities that you have to increase conversions and reduce churn. And now let's start with our platform tour. Starting with Google Firebase, which is not only an analytics platform, it's also an app development platform, as I said. Um, you see that the screens in Google Firebase um, analytics takes a KPI measurement approach. So, you know, you see the retention rate or revenue. And sometimes, like I said, we don't want to always look at just KPIs. We want to look at the product or user journey more. So you may need to build some custom funnels, create some segments, uh, like we did with Hertz, extract it, some data and put it, you know, in Data Studio. It's, you know, uh, it's endless how you, how you want to manage the data. 
Um, the bottom chart here also shows data from Crashalytics, which Firebase offers as part of its analytics, so it's kind of integrated within. So you're good in terms of tracking the app health or performance. Uh, this report shows how funnels look like in Firebase, similar to what we're used to seeing in GA. Um, and these, of course, are customizable, just like you do with Google Analytics, um, using either built-in or custom events. This is the fun stuff if you're, you know, a developer or just interested in, in looking at the details in the user flow. It shows you a user snapshots, kind of highlights details about the user, where he's coming from, what kind of device, and then shows you every single interaction that he's done um, in the app and shows you the parameters of each interaction. Firebase has a similar report for debug view. So if you're, if you're running your app in debug mode, you can see the same details to validate that the right data is passing through to your analytics tool. This is the detailed view of Crash Analytics report, where you can see um, you know, detailed crash information, issues associated with each version, um, and even like where did the issue happen in which line of code. Um, as a summary, Firebase Analytics or Google Analytics for Firebase has pretty good event tracking uh, out of the box, allows you to implement Google Tag Manager if you want. It has good features for funnels, audiences. It's not very extensive in product analytics. Um, it's a free tool. And like I said, using Firebase for your app development is not free. Um, they have different plans and you can pay as you go based on traffic and so on. But the analytics of it is free regardless of the platform that you use to develop your app. Next is Facebook Analytics. It offers great out-of-the-box reporting on revenue, funnels, and cohorts. And here you see how it defines channels as your apps or platforms between Facebook page, web page, um, Instagram, and then iOS and Android apps. This is a view of funnels uh, reports. So how you could further slice the funnel data by device or by any other dimension or filter. It also has great features for automated insights. Uh, it's still in beta, but it tells you insights about your app and audience that may be helpful when you improve or change, you know, you want to review your marketing strategy. Um, below is the revenue reporting with the regular KPIs that we're used to seeing for e-commerce sites. <clears throat> and this report here is on user journeys. Um, it's very interesting. It tells you where users start and where they end up for their conversion across all devices. So someone who started on their Android device, for example, ended up converting on the web. Or, you know, someone starting on Instagram, um, converting then on, what you know, or a different web page. So, in summary, um, Facebook Analytics is great if you're ma marketing on social media along with other platforms, like apps and websites. It has great reporting um, on user journeys, cross-platforms, as well as lifetime value as well, and revenue reports. The differentiator that Facebook, you know, they brand their tool as people-first analytics tool. Um, they build insights based on the data that they already have on 2 billion members. Next is Amplitude. Amplitude is a great platform if you want to have customized solution. Let's say your business is not a typical retail or social media business, maybe something like a music streaming app like Spotify, um, in which the events and metrics that you measure are totally different than a typical e-commerce site, and sometimes you want to give it a dollar value. So Amplitude events um, and dashboards are all custom built. You can technically track anything with Amplitude and give it a dollar value when you want. The approach um, that you create your charts, cohorts, and funnel segments for your dashboard and then pin them to your reporting interface. And they have a lot of templates here that you can customize, you know, based on your app. Here's an example of how to create a cohort using their template, um, you know, choosing different conditions of the users through their interaction and user properties. <clears throat> Amplitude also offers the user snapshot options, similar to what we saw in Firebase, but it has a little bit more details by having some history for the users, such as how many sessions, when they were first seen, and so on. Um, in summary, Amplitude offers a very custom approach that gives you a lot of flexibility. The free version of Amplitude has limited reports and allows you for only 10 million events a month, 
Um, then they have different plans that come with additional event bandwidth and additional features as well. The platforms that I've shown do not resemble the best or suggested platforms. They were the ones that had online demos for their product and I wanted to share them with you. I'm also a big fan of Localytics, Mixpanel and, and App Analytics for marketing. I like Adjust, um, like uh, Kachava. You know, they didn't have an online demo to show, but it's worth that you, if you're interested in learning about a specific subject, you know, sign up with them, try to get it your personalized demo. And as I mentioned previously, sometimes a combination of tools may be needed to meet your specific needs. And this leads us to the next topic. If we need more than a tool, naturally the next question would be, should I use a tag management system? The answer is usually yes, but it depends again. Just like using a tag management system on your website, you load less files with a tag manager. It is similar in the app world. It means less SDKs to load. But there are some exceptions to that. That's why I say when applicable. There are some analytics tools that even though you load them with a tag manager, you still have to put their SDKs in the app. And more SDKs means heavier app. So when applicable, you will have a lighter app with a tag manager. Um, also, Depending on the tag manager that you use, some of them go beyond and try to optimize battery performance. For example, Google Tag Manager batches network, network requests for analytics hits to improve battery performance and send them, you know, sending five or six hits together so it doesn't drain the phone batteries. Um, as for you, the app owner, you're more concerned with updating the tracking and the problems with apps is every time you change your app code or if you add a new vendor, um, to track analytics or, you know, marketing conversions, you need to republish your app to the App Store and have users updated. And some users never update their app. I'm guilty of that sometimes. Um, so you'll never get the right data from them. But when you have a tag management system, you ensure that your tracking changes are synced automatically with all devices. You don't need those users to update their app. So no waiting for your data collection. On the right here, I'm showing a list of tags that are currently available in Google Tag Manager as an example. There's no market, you know, there's the, um, the marketing conversion tags such as Floodlight, AdWords, and there is the analytics platform that we talked about, you know, specifically for marketing as well, um, Adjust, Apps, Flyer, Kachava, Tune, and most of those, um, you know, change depending on the platform that you're in, if you're on Launch or if you're on Telium, each vendor has its own list of supported tags. Another emerging technology is using API hubs and customer data platforms. These products um, came as an answer to issues that we deal with now as we collect data from different platforms. API hubs let you send data only once to a single platform, where you own all, the, own all of the data, and then the vendor communication is happening server-side on the API, not on the device, not on your mobile phone. So the result is a lighter app, an optimized app performance, and that equals a happy user. So when using mobile specifically, speed is a key feature. Latency makes or breaks the user experience. Mobile apps, IoT devices, they provide a wealth of information. But when you're sending data to numerous platforms, you know, like AdWords, Facebook, CRM, then user experience might be negatively impacted. So CDPs or customer data platforms are just like API hubs, but they go a little further by including data from other research, you know, other sources such as CRM or offline data imports. Some kind of focus on the API hubs here. Um, why would you use it? It's client size, uh, client side versus service side. In terms of the network usage, you know, the more requests that you send for analytics or marketing, all data would consume the network bandwidth of your phone. And also that translates into battery performance. So if we want to send data to all of these vendors, uh, you know, the API will reduce that by just sending one hit to the API hub and everything will be processed to different, different vendors um, service side. In terms of SDKs, just like we mentioned in tag management, you know, you would reduce the number of SDKs that you need to load your app, meaning you're having, you know, everything is happening server side, so nothing needs to be on the app. Um, when applicable, there's always exceptions to that. And seamless updates, exactly like tag man management as well. Um, you won't need to update the app when you add a new vendor because it's all happening. You know, the integration with the vendor happens server side, nothing on the phone. 
Um, and if you decide to go the CDP route, then the last two points are, you know, where you have data enhancement and enrichment. This is when you load other data to enrich um, the, the, the event or enrich the customer profile before sending it to your marketing conversions or, you know, analytics tags. That happens real time. Here's an example of, you know, an API hub. Um, this is the Telium event data framework. You see that middle part is the API hub or Telium event stream. Pick up data from all of these platforms, whether it's mobile, you know, laptop, all of that, and send all the data to server side to the vendors. And you can send them even to data lakes like Amazon S3 or Redshift, you know, it's endless. Segment Connections and Particle have exactly the same product, showing exactly um, the same flow for the data. And that will solve the problems created by a like, fractured approach to data collection and delivery. These platforms, they eliminate data silos. They you know, eliminate inconsistent customer experience and operational inefficiencies. Um, there are many tools. I'm not just, you know, there is a lot of tools out there and it's worth the research if you're interested and if you have a lot of marketing um, tags that you run on your app. Next, we're going to talk about the tracking strategy. Now that we know the different types of app analytics and available platforms, we're ready to walk through an app analytic tracking strategy. A good foundation for your tracking strategy begins by setting objectives and KPIs for the app tracking. The objectives will lead you to track the important metrics for your business, and you want to make that strategy a living document, continuously updated as your business grows and priorities change. Whether it's revenue, awareness, downloads, or a mix of multiple goals, you need to always ask yourself, what is going to give me actionable data? This will guide you to what you should track and what you shouldn't. And what you need to do is go through every screen in your app to uncover what's going to give you actionable data in terms of app health, in-app engagement, conversion, and revenue. Back to our Hertz app, where customers can look in the map and find locations around them. We start defining what details we will be tracking in each interaction in every screen. Keeping in mind, we're looking to evaluate in-app engagement, health, revenue, or other marketing um, goals. So the example here, and I'm just showing for one interaction, if someone clicks on a location on the map, from you know either on the map or from the nearby menu, we want to track the following data points, you know, there's a map click, we want to track the location name, you know, user lang latitude, longitude, when it did happen, date and time, um, you know, booking duration, the car type he was looking for, like all the parameters are part of his search, along with the location details. Um, and then once we track that, we map it to which dimensions they go on your analytics platform or marketing platform. So you will have this kind of a two layer tracking strategy to mention the trigger or the event, you know, and then what parameters and how, how do they map in your um, analytics platform. And then you go, you know, to the next trigger, which is, you know, if no location is found, what do you want to track? If there's a map error, what happens? All of this needs to be highlighted in full details in the tracking strategy. So you know where to find the data, and when you're, you know, when you want to build your dashboard, you know exactly what parameters or what metrics you're looking at, the dimensions, and your developer also knows what to implement and how to map those parameters. Tips and resources. Validating an implementation. After you have implemented the tracking outline in your strategy, the next step is to test and validate. Um, and similar to how you've done in any web implementation, you'll be testing the screens, uh, looking at traffic in your analytics tools, whether it's event, transactions, to validate that the data is coming through okay. Um, so you want to make sure you test your app in a development environment, of course. If your developers have a test version that you can install on your phone, or if you're using a phone emulator, whatever it takes to generate those analytics hits and be able to see them real time in your tool. A lot of the analytics um, tools have live stream or real-time data that you see while you're testing. Like we saw in Firebase, they have the debug view and all tools have something similar. 
So you want to try to use those, you know, during the implementation phase to make sure everything is validated before you launch your app. Um, to monitor the full details, sometimes you could do um, use a proxy, a tool like Charles, to basically listen to your phone, generating network requests, and be able to see if the app is passing the right data and all the custom parameters that you implemented. One thing to watch out here, if, you're, uh, if the analytics tool batches request for optimization. Remember when we mentioned how some tag managers group requests for optimized battery performance? This sometimes makes it harder to test. Best practices. The first thing is don't wait to implement analytics. Consider it at design stage. If you don't lay the foundations for analytics early on, you won't be able to measure anything meaningful for a while. Collecting data at an early stage is vital because you may discover that users don't use your app the way you envisioned. So having the right tools capture this early allows you to be proactive in resolving issues before users you know, leave a bad review or simply delete your app. Next is patience. Having patience can be a tricky one, um, but as we all know, it takes time to start seeing trends and identifying segments and personas, especially if you have just launched your app. Tools, um, take the time to look into the demo so you make sure that you're choosing the right tool that gives you the dashboard you need out of the box. You want a tool that shows you behaviors and not just KPIs. Think user journey. Unfortunately, no matter how many sleepless nights your developer put into carefully planning the user journey, your users might not use the app exactly as intended. This is why we stress the importance of knowing what your users are doing in the app by studying their footsteps. And lastly, measure what matters. You must begin by setting objectives and KPIs to the app tracking. I sometimes like to do a list of what we should and what we should not track so we don't spend time and resources measuring things that don't answer any questions. Some additional info and resources here. When you choose a tool, make sure you look into its deep linking features. Deep links are a handy tool where you can link from a website directly to a specific screen in your app and you can have um, the full attribution details. I have also published a tutorial on implementing Firebase with Google Tag Manager for apps. If you plan on using GTM, check it out, that's the link. And as I mentioned, uh, when using GTM, tracking analytics hits may be tricky when the requests get batched together. So we have a tool um, that's available for everyone um, that you know decode these hits so you can easily test your analytics implementation. Thank you for your time. It was a pleasure to share this knowledge with you. Here are my contact details on social media. Let's connect and drop me a message anytime. Thank you.